polling has started uh, with good enthusiasm in all these uh, poll bound states uh, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, and uh, Puducherry, the Union Territory that's under President's rule. All of them, in fact, going for one phase of poll. We are talking about 234 uh, constituencies in Tamil Nadu, 140 in Kerala, and about 30 constituencies uh, in Puducherry that are going to polls. First, focus on Tamil Nadu, where, of course, uh, we are having uh, Mr. Uh, e. Palni Swami. Uh, trying to retain power after 10 years of uh, incumbency of the AIA DMK and he is uh, trying to uh, rest trying to rest power from him is Mr MK Stalin of the uh, DMK who in fact uh, uh, is uh, as you mentioned going to be going in and uh, voting Kola, uh, uh, Stalin is someone who is contesting from uh, the constituency called Kolatur, which falls uh, within Chennai. And Kolatur is a constituency where, uh, in fact, for the third time, he would be hoping consecutively for the third time to be able to uh, come to power there. And yes, uh, that is a constituency where uh, uh, Mr. Stalin uh, is expected to, in fact, uh, sail through quite smoothly because this is a constituency, despite being in the opposition, he has looked after the constituency pretty well. He has uh, uh, that has, in fact, a considerable Muslim population. He has the support of the left unions there as well. And uh, people there would also be hoping that perhaps if it becomes the chief minister's constituency, they would have more to gain from it. And that's one reason why uh, the enthusiasm among the voters there, largely middle class and uh, lower middle class, who are uh, uh, are uh, are going to be voting there in big numbers as well? We saw Mr. Stalin's wife uh, Durga also campaign there. She doesn't make any campaign speeches, but yes, she was present there, uh, uh, asking for votes for her husband and for the party. We also have uh, actor Rajni Kant, in fact, coming in to cast his vote. Uh, this is someone who was expected to, in fact, uh, play a big role in the 2021 polls, and he had, in fact. Uh, expressed his intent to join politics uh, about three years ago and uh, will he, won't he has been going on for more than 25 years but subsequently uh, because of COVID reasons and because of his health reasons he said he is going to not be in politics and withdrew uh, from this election otherwise uh, we would have perhaps uh, seen uh, the superstar also in the fray if he had been in uh, uh, in the fray. I am also joined now by uh, Sam Daniel from Chennai Sam, uh, big superstars, of course, coming in to vote, uh, and one of those superstars is Kamla Hassan, who uh, is also uh, the MNM chief, and he is talking about at a time when your, uh, you know, the tall leaders like Karnanidhi and Jalilita are not there. Kamla Hassan is talking about a new phase of elections and politics in Tamil Nadu. What is the kind of impact that you expect uh, Tam uh, Ka Kamala Hassan's party to make and also what is the kind of enthusiasm that you are seeing among voters in Tamil Nadu who may be a little tired of the Dravidian parties. They have so far kept away the national parties from coming to power there. But with these new players, uh, what is the kind of enthusiasm you are seeing among people? That's right. Uh, it's the first election after the two icons, Jailalitha and Karunanidhi, died. And it's in this context Kamal Hassan sees there is a space for parties like him who talk in terms of a new level of politics, new quality of politics, what he calls a new era of people-centric politics, uh, Umar. And as we speak now, Kamal Hassan has cast his vote and is on his way to Coimbatore, his uh, constituency, to oversee the elections there. He has not spoken to the media yet. He says he'll speak in Coimbatore, but we'll have to wait and see what kind of a dent his party would make, particularly in a state which has always uh, moved between the two Dravidian parties, the DMK and the ruling AADMK here. And uh, different perceptions, some welcome entry by people like Kamal Hassan saying they usher in a new breed of politicians, a new breed of politics, a new kind of politics. And some also say they wouldn't want to waste their votes casting to new parties who may not really be successful in terms of capturing power. But some say it's important that voters encourage newcomers like that. So we'll have to wait and see uh, what kind of uh, an impact will Kamal Hassan's m and make in the 2019 Lok Sabha elections. They were able to secure around 4% votes. In some urban pockets like Coimbatore, Chennai, they even exceeded 10% votes. And that's what they're hoping at, saying that people vote differently for Lok Sabha and Assembly elections. And they're very confident this time they'll be able to really make it big. In terms of the other rivalry, both the DMK and AIDMK are in a fierce fight in the state, particularly the DMK has been out of power for 10 years, it's hoping to capture power and the DMK having been in power for two consecutive terms is fighting hard to get 
a third consecutive term. And in the 2019 Lok Sabha elections, the AIADMK BJP alliance suffered a near rout, winning just one of the 39 seats in the state. And the DMK Congress alliance swept the polls, winning 38 of the 39 seats. And they hope to continue that kind of a winning stride this time as well. For the AIADMK, although many say there is not much of anti-incumbency, it's continuing alliance with the BGP. Many look at that as a baggage for the ruling AIADMK and that could work against it. But the Chief Minister and his Deputy OPS has been justifying their continuing alliance with the BGP, which was in a sense rejected in the 2019 election, saying that an alliance with the ruling party at the centre helps them to bring in a lot of funds, a lot of developmental projects and welfare measures for Tamil Nadu, which the DMK rejects or opposes, saying that any vote for the AIADMK in Tamil Nadu would be an vote for the BJP. And they say the ruling AIADMK has been arm-twisted and would be ruled or remote controlled by the BJP from the Delhi, which the BJP denies. And in terms of manifestos or policies or promises, we have been seeing a competitive populism between these two Dravidian arch rivals. The ruling AIADMK promises free washing machines, 1,500 rupees salary for housewives, free tabs and data for students besides waiver of student loans. On the other hand, you have the DMK promising 1,000 rupee uh, monthly allowance for women, housewives, and also free tabs and free data besides reduction in fuel price from in terms of 5 rupees per litre uh, in the case of petrol, in terms of diesel 4 rupees and also a subsidy of 100 rupees for LPG cylinders while the AIADMK promises free 6 cylinders every time. And this is also the first election where you have the Sasikala team after her ouster, after her return from jail serving the four-year term in the disproportionate assets case, her nephew is continuing to fight for the second time launching his AMMK and last time they were able to shift or split votes meant for AADMK and this time too they hope to make it big and that could be one negative factor for the AADMK because its votes could get split particularly in southern Tamil Nadu where the Thevar community is quite strong and although the ruling AADMK had given 10.5% reservation for the one-year community who are dominant in the northern part of Tamil Nadu. It's having a kind of a backlash in southern Tamil Nadu, particularly among the Tevas, its key vote bank, who think that they've been given a raw deal. Yeah. That has forced the ruling AADMK to even talk in terms of saying it's only a temporary measure. Once they capture power, they'll again have a caste-wise yeah. enumeration based on which they say they will be giving every such MBC community a kind of a quota in both job and uh, educational uh, admissions. So, so we'll have to wait and see how this certainly a fascinating election. It's a five-cornered contest. Besides these four players, we also have Director Siemens Nam Tamilar Kachi, who's yet to make a kind of a dent, but yes. he's been continuously fighting in the last few elections, although they've not been able to make it big or win even a single election.